Okay, welcome to the first Stat 432 video of the spring 2021 semester. Um, I should say right away that this is Stat 432 section 1UG slash 1GR. Uh, so in the section, you should have a 1, uh, not a 2. There's two different um, sections this semester. So this th these videos will pertain to section 1. Um, section 1 is taught by me. Uh, David Delpiez. I'm a teaching assistant professor in the Department of Statistics. Um, I've taught this course a number of times before. I'm always excited to teach it. Um, yeah, so that, that's enough about me. Let's um, sort of jump right into it. So um, it, uh, over, here, over here, I sort of have a list of things I'm going to talk about in this video. Um, mostly, we're here to talk about the syllabus, uh, but I sort of want to mention um, a couple other things here and there. Um, video is among them. And one thing I'll say is that um, this semester, I'm going to try to do a sort of um, intro welcome video uh, for each week. Um, this video is going to sort of serve as that, but not as much. It'll be different in follow up weeks because I won't have to introduce an entire course. I only have to introduce um, a week's worth of a course. Um, so this won't be the, the typical welcome week video. A welcome to the week video, but it'll be sort of um, in that style where I sort of just talk about what it is that you're going to do. Um, except in this video, I'm going to talk about what you're going to do um, sort of throughout the entire course. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about the syllabus um, first, uh, but a brief mention about the website as I do that, which is that the website is stat432.org. Um, that should make it very easy to find. Um, I, I don't think um, that should be an issue. Um, hopefully, if you're watching this video, uh, either you already have or you're about to um, receive an email from me, uh, and that'll be one of the big pieces of information in that email, which is that website, so you always know how to get to it. Um, but before we talk about the structure of the website, which I'll come back to, uh, let's talk through the syllabus. Um, which is linked. So um, this sentence will obviously need to go, but um, it is important to realize that um, the syllabus, even after the semester starts, it is somewhat subject to change, little things here and there. Obviously, I will announce them, um, but I think it's um, important to say that it's, it's useful to come back to the syllabus throughout the semester. Yes, you should read it now, um, but you, sh you should come back and read it maybe a couple times throughout the semester maybe right before the exams to, to sort of make sure uh, what you think uh, is the course policy really is the course policy there. So there's no um, miscommunication there. Okay. Uh, so like I said, this is stat 432 basics of statistical learning. Um, we are now cross listed as uh, actuarial science risk management 451. That is ASRM 451. Um, I, I just have a slight preference for referring to the course as stat 432 because for more years, uh, than not. That's the only um, name of the course, and it's just what I instinctively call it. Um, obviously, I'll know what you're talking about if you say uh, ASRM 451, but I'm just so used to calling it Staff 432, um, just so I don't get confused. Uh, it'd be best to do that. And then again, uh, I need to stress this is section 1UG, 1GR. Um, there's a, a different set of videos and a different instructor for uh, section 2UG, 2GR. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be covering um, similar material, but we're not using the same homework. We're not using the same exams. Um, so you can't sort of, um, uh, you, you can't exchange between the two courses. They are separate courses. Okay. Um, pretty sure you already knew this, but the course is online. Um, I think most importantly, I should say that um, the course will be ran asynchronously. So I'll be recording these videos um, and posting them sort of all at once at the start of a week. Um, uh, the only sort of synchronous pieces to the um, course are office hours, which we'll talk about in a little, uh, a little while. So um, compared to previous semesters, the course is a little bit smaller, at least for me, because there's two sections. So our course staff is not as big as it has been recently. It's just myself and a TA, uh, Tianyi. Um, he is a veteran of the course now. He has done it previously, so uh, he will be an invaluable resource. Um, you'll get to meet him in office hours. I have this little note here. Um, you can just call me Dave or David. 
Um, either, either one is fine, honestly. Uh, Professor Delpiers is okay, although it's not my favorite. Um, what I don't, what I don't like is just Professor, because um, that's that's my title. It's not my name. So uh, if you were to refer me as Professor, I would maybe just say, "Hey, student," which seems pretty weird. So uh, my name is David. You can use that. Uh, Dave is also fine by me. Okay. Um, so here's the course description. It's too long. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Here is a topics list. It's too long. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, this will be largely um, summarized in another video this week when I overview all of machine learning. Uh, and these are the learning objectives of the course. It's too long. I'm not going to read it. Big picture. The goal here is to introduce you to machine learning. Um, and, and without getting into the nitty gritty details of the learning objectives, my goal is to give you a foundation for future study that is follow-up courses of which, you know, there are a growing number on this campus uh, or self-study because, you know, there's just a mountain of information of this uh, 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 mountain of information about this stuff online. Um, but then also I want you to be able to do these things. So fire up R, maybe even fire up Python, whatever your programming language of choices, find the right packages and actually use these methods, these machine learning methods as a part of a data analysis, as a part of a larger data system, but I want you to be able to do these things. So we'll talk a little bit about theory. We'll probably um, skew more towards talking about um, practice, although we will live in a sort of blend of the two um, because we want to sort of be a broad introduction to the um, ideas. Okay, um, just a note here too is that um, if you have a look at the learning objectives of the um, SOA exam PA, uh, this course actually will match up uh, pretty closely with that. Actually, some of the data analysis we'll do towards the end of the course will actually really mirror, I think, a lot of what they're doing there. So if you are an actuarial student, um, uh, have a look at this. Uh, and um, I, 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 I keep saying, um, if anyone takes exam PA, I'd really love to hear about how this course preps for it. Because I think, I think we're hitting on a lot of the same things there. They do computer-based testing with R. We do computer-based testing with R. Um, they do real data analyses. We real, do real data analysis, analyses. I think there's a lot of um, potential overlap there. So I'd really like to hear if anyone uh, takes this exam. Okay, so two textbooks for this course, both of which are free. Uh, one I refer to as BSL. Um, call it a book, call it notes, but these are basically things that I've written specifically for this class. Um, so this will be something that I reference um, frequently, um, and that will be sort of the assigned reading. Um, this book, uh, introduction, oh, they changed the URL. I will need to update that. Oh, this is a new website. A much updated website. Huh. Okay. Anyway, um, this book, An Introduction to Statistical Learning um, with Applications in R, uh, is a really good book uh, in the area. Um, it was actually a book that sort of prompted a bit of the creation of this class, uh, and is one of the probably most referenced textbooks in this area. Um, so um, I won't assign reading from this book, but my suggestion is throughout the semester, you should read this entire book cover to cover. It's not a particularly difficult read. Um, but I think because it's so often referenced uh, in the statistical learning, machine learning community, that you would be smart to read through it. Now, for the purposes of, of our course, um, the book that I designed for our course will be a little bit more applicable. Um, and honestly, um, the, the, the content in, in this book, ISL, is great. Um, I just don't um, think the presentation is perfectly aligned with the course. That's why I have my own thing. Uh, and mine sort of uh, provides a lot more R resources uh, and, and uh, narration around that. Um, but I think that the content here is um, pretty important, so it wouldn't hurt to uh, read through this book too. And my understanding is that they have a second edition that's coming out soon, which I'm really excited about. Um, oh, well, here you go. Here's some of the stuff they're adding. Um, Wait, is it out? Can you get the second edition yet? No. Okay. Ah, summer 2021. So we won't, well, it won't be useful for this course, but that's something to look forward to. Um, 
yeah so that's just a note there um right but they're both free both available online um nothing to buy there okay in terms of prerequisites um the hope is that you've taken either 420 or 425 at the university of illinois um, another way to sort of state the prerequisites would be to say, I want you to have fit a multiple regression model in R and you also understand sort of say, um, say bits about, uh, how that works, what the results are, say, you know, distribution of test statistics, things like that. So, so you've seen a calculus based coverage of probability and statistics, and then you fit some linear models somewhere, preferably, well, much preferably in R the way we're going on this course. So 420, 425 would both be sufficient for that, but um, other experiences as well. Um, what I have here are some textbooks that would sort of get you up to speed if you uh, didn't have some of those experiences. Uh, this one, uh, Apply Statistics with R, is a book that I wrote for Stat 420. It would cover like a crash course in R and then details of doing linear models in R. Uh, and then these two books are um, uh, sort of uh, deep dives into R. Uh, this one is sort of with no prior knowledge, starting from nothing. Um, I sort of expect the information in, in this book would be largely familiar to you. And then this book um, covers a bit more um, and would be more of a reference book, but you should be able to understand the things in there without too much trouble. Okay, so uh, moving on to course communication. And it's been a while since I've made videos, so I'm not used to talking so much. Okay. So in terms of course communication, um, we don't have the usual usual lecture time. So videos, there's not two-way communication. It's just me talking at you. So um, that's not effective. So we need ways to talk to each other. So uh, in this course, we'll use three. Oh, one more, um, another one-way communication will be um, announcements will be sent via email. Uh, so make sure your at Illinois account is um, working. You check it at least once a day, that kind of thing. But anyway, back to two-way communications. So um, this is sort of my preference for which we use from best to worst. So starting with office hours. So here is our um, office hour schedule that we decided on. Um, there can be week. So this is going to be basically what we try to do each week. Uh, but there will be week to week variation depending on, you know, if a meeting comes up or someone's traveling or who, I mean, not that there's travel going on, but you know, um, there can be week to week variation. So I will post this schedule every week, but this is kind of what you should expect will be the, the case most of the weeks. Um, I'd also note, so my office hours go from seven, sorry, not seven, eight to 9 PM, all times listed are champagne time. Um, so they'll, they'll go from eight to 9 PM on monday and thursday uh, and then afterwards at nine o'clock we'll shift to the ta taking over um, but note that also before that um, from seven to eight both of those days uh, i'm having my stat 510 office hours now you're welcome to attend those you're welcome to ask questions during those but if there's a 510 student there and if they have a question they take absolute priority so you if if any 510 person has a question they will cut in line in front of you but at eight o'clock, we'll shift to 4.32 uh, and you will get first precedent. So, um, but, but, but feel free to use the seven o'clock hour um, as well. Um, that class is rather small, so I don't wanna just sit there not answering questions. So if you all have questions, feel free to come. Um, right, so office hours, I prefer above the other things we'll talk about because we can have an actual exchange. I don't have to say post on Piazza and then wait for 20 minutes for you to respond and then wait 20 minutes to respond back and it just take forever. We can literally just rapid fire back and forth, um, get through questions and, you know, help you learn something. So uh, my strong preference is for, if you have a question, come to office hours, we'll just take care of it there. Um, yeah, so I view office hours as sort of a, an informal meeting. Um, I, I don't like to make it sort of like a strict regulated thing. Um, so, so, you know, everyone will sort of just be involved in casual conversation. Um, but if the conversation drifts away from course stuff and you have like a direct homework question, please interject, interrupt and say, Hey, I have this question. Can we talk about it? Um, and we'll move to you. Um, if things get too busy and too hard to manage, I'll sort of insta institute sort of like a queuing system, but I, I don't like it to feel so, um, regulated. I, I prefer it to be more of a, a hangout kind of experience, but, um, 
ultimately in service of getting your, you know, largely quiz questions answered. So uh, you, you always have the ability to interject and get those quiz questions answered. Um, and then, you know, office hours are, um, uh, you know, it's not, it's not public, but there are other students there. Uh, if you have a private concern, um, that's when you want to reach out to me via email to set up a private meeting. And I have some information here about sort of how to go about doing that. Okay, um, this is not a link, I need to fix that. But anyway, um, I should make a note of that. Sorry. Okay, so after office hours, the next best way to ask a question is on Piazza. Um, so you'll need to register for that at this link here, which is not a link right now, I'll fix that after this video. Uh, and here's the access code um, you to go with that link. Um, so long story short, you know, Piazza is a um, message board kind of thing. Um, sort of importantly, actually, let's head over there real quick. So um, when you get on Piazza, please, 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 please read this post here. Um, it talks about um, expectations around how to go about posting on Piazza. Um, I have some very specific uh, requests around how to share code. Um, Bottom line, I want you to overshare code, not undershare code um, when it comes to quizzes. On exams, you're just not allowed to post anything about them. Um, you, sorry, about exam content. You can talk about logistics, of course. But for quizzes, basically, if you encounter an error, I want you to, to copy paste into Piazza every bit of code from top to bottom that someone else needs to run to get the same error. Um, and it needs to be formatted correctly. Basically, you want to post in a way where someone else can quickly highlight what you did, copy paste it into their R and absolutely recreate the issue. Um, we don't want to have to guess at code you did. Uh, we want to be able to reproduce that error. Um, and so as a part of that, uh, absolutely do not ever post a screenshot of code that is strictly forbidden. I don't know where this habit came from, but students really love to do it, um, but it kind of makes no sense because if you screenshot it, I can't copy paste it and run your code. And I'm certainly not gonna type out your code again just to get it to run. So no screenshots of code. Um, if, if you don't follow any of this information here, when you post, we will simply link you back to this post so that you can uh, read that information and try again. Um, they're, they're, they're you know close to homework or quizzes being due. You know There can be a lot of noise on Piazza and if you post something that's easy to read, easy to respond to, you'll get a better response. So you'll want to do that. Okay, um, generally um, we'll try for responding within 24 hours, probably not on weekends, um, but if you want an instantaneous response, come to office hours. If you want a reasonably quick response, Piazza, but don't, don't set, like we will often respond very quickly, but you should not expect that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, lastly, um, the last thing to do is to email us. Email should basically only be for uh, personal things. Basically, uh, asking a question that you wouldn't want someone else to know the answer to. So that's why for the most part, quiz questions should go on Piazza because other people are probably gonna have some more questions to you and if we can help you, we can help someone else. Um, but if you have an individual issue, you'll want to email us, uh, there's kind of a, a highly regulated email policy here, although we hope you follow it. Um, this is to help help both you and us in ways you might not realize, but um, we absolutely need you to follow this email policy, especially the part about emailing us from your Illinois account. Um, we will only do Illinois business on Illinois accounts. So if you email us from your Gmail, we're gonna say, sorry, you need to, you need to use your Illinois account for us to respond. So keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, here are our emails. Um, oh, email, same thing with Piazza. If you do it during the week, we'll try to get back to you within 24 hours. On the weekend, you might have to wait till Monday. Okay, uh, this is again about uh, sharing code. Um, in this class, overshare, don't undershare, no screenshots, uh, nothing about exam questions, but anything else, overshare, make it as easy as possible for us to understand what your problem is, and make it easy as possible for us to reproduce your issue, make it easy as possible for us to help and respond to that issue. So overshare, don't undershare. 
okay, um, assessments. What are y'all gonna do in this course? So um, basically there's going to be sort of two big blocks of time in the course. The first part of the course is all going to be done in Prairie Learn. It's going to be when we're sort of getting into the, the basics and mechanics of all these methods. You're going to be taking quizzes on the Prairie Learn system and then taking exams also with Prairie Learn plus the CBTF. Um, so uh, the first thing you're going to encounter are Prairie Learn quizzes. Um, click this link here. It'll take you to Prairie Learn. Actually, I want to see what that looks like. Uh, and then if you haven't already, click this add course button here. And then you would click this link here to get into the course. Um, it'll look something like this then. I needed to switch to student view. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, so there'll be nine to 10 quizzes, depending if you're a grad student or an undergraduate student. They'll all be in Prairie Learn. Uh, I'm going to come back to that and do one in a little bit. But for now, uh, there's that. Um, so with the quizzes, excuse me, with the quizzes, I have this policy that... Um, they're sort of rolling deadlines. So quiz one, which is the first quiz, which you have access to already, um, it's due Monday of the second week. So Monday, February 1st. When I say due, what I'm referring to is what I call the 105% credit deadline. So basically, if you get everything correct, that is 100% before that deadline, your grade moves up to 105%. Um, and then you have another week after that for 100%, and then another week after that for 85%. Now, uh, don't get too excited. This is not extra credit in the traditional sense. Uh, these are what I call um, buffer points. So basically, it's extra credit for only quizzes, and you can only get up to 100% on quizzes. So if we jump ahead a little bit here, um, there's the quiz subscore. So you so you'll get like say, say you have like 99% on quizzes and you multiply by 0.5 and that's how it affects your overall final grade. So basically the way it works is that the buffer points, you know, if you miss something, say, say you get, uh, you know, 95 on a quiz somewhere, um, that can get canceled out by a 105 on another quiz. So basically it's a way to, if you, if you keep up with getting the buffer points, it would be pretty hard to get under 100% on the quizzes. So it's basically just a way to hopefully push almost everyone's quiz grade up to 100% if you spend enough time and uh, apply yourself on the quizzes. Also, to that note on quizzes, and we'll get into this when I preview it on Prelearn a little bit, um, these are unlimited attempt uh, sort of um, low stakes quizzes. So you can try every question as many times as it takes to get it right. There's no penalty for guessing. And on some of the questions, when you get it wrong, we'll even show you the correct answer. Um, and then you can do it again with different numbers and slightly different uh, problem, but you'll, you'll sort of get feedback and hints along the way. Um, so it, it's our hope that if you apply yourself, almost everyone should get 100% um, for the quiz subscore. Okay. Um, again, follow this link to pray or uh, add the course, start doing quizzes. Um, so this semester, there's going to be two midterm exams uh, on these days at 7 p.m. Um, much more information about those when we get there. But most importantly, um, it will be done through the CBTF online. Um, you should be able to go in, I think even today, uh, go to the scheduler and um, sign up because you do need to sign up. But um, I will remind you about this as we get towards the exams. Um, but um, I have found that the CBTF online is um, great. Uh, I kind of don't know any other way to say it. Um, it's free of cost to students. It's, it's university and department um, uh, supported. Um, and basically, from your perspective, it'll be exactly like doing a quiz, except you'll have your phone set up and a proctor will be watching you. Um, there's no extra software to install. It's all done via Zoom. Um, so it, it should be a pretty seamless process from transferring from doing the quizzes to doing the exams. The only differences will be you'll have a little bit of time pressure because you'll have two hours instead of a whole week. Um, and you won't sort of get um, to repeat questions an infinite number of times, although you will get multiple tries, uh, except you won't get like um, answers and new variants. You'll just be stuck with the one. And you got to try it, but you will get multiple attempts. Um, much more on that when we get um, towards the exams. Okay. 
And then at the end of the semester, we'll sort of we'll sort of stop dealing with Prelearn and then start dealing with doing data analysis. So you'll be dealing with real data. You'll be writing up reports in our Markdown and submitting them and getting some feedback on that. Um, so that'll be sort of the gear shift um, three quarters of the way through the semester. We'll sort of go from, um, I don't, I don't want to say like uh, fake world to real world. We'll go from like classroom examples to real world examples. Okay. Um, all right. So here's the overview of the deadlines for the course. Um, long story short, there's basically one thing due every week uh, where in an exam week, that thing is the exam. Uh, there's this graduate quiz here. So like I said, there's nine quizzes for undergraduates uh, and there's an additional sort of quiz for um, graduate students that will get released well before uh, the end of the semester. So you can kind of work on it throughout the semester, but it won't be released immediately. Okay. Um, in terms of technology in the course, um, R and R Studio are more or less required. In theory, you could... You can get away without using our studio, but it's somewhat recommended and we'll be showing you how to do things in our studio. Although if you're like an Emacs user, I'm not gonna make you switch text editors. Um, yeah, so I'll have a whole separate video this week about how to set up your R in our studio. Um, a few things about your R version, just to make sure everything's uh, in working order for the quizzes in this course. Um, but yeah, um, I'll jump into R in a second here too when I, practice prayer learn a little bit but uh for now uh just know that you're going to need the most recent version of r and uh, a relatively up-to-date version of our studio okay uh in terms of like external technologies other than this course website uh obviously we mentioned you're going to use prairie learn uh you're going to use piazza um you're going to use r in our studio but those aren't really learning management um but then you're also going to use compass compass we won't really use it all until the end of the semester that's what we'll use for uh, submitting the data analyses. Uh, and that's how I'll get you your final letter grade before I send it off to the registrar. Um, so for now, you really just need to deal with the course website, Prairie Learn, and Piazza. I guess also Zoom, but um, I guess you probably knew that. Okay, uh, in terms of grading, here's how the, um, the various uh, uh, activities sort of are weighted. So note that the analyses are only 10% of your overall grade. So while there's three of them and each one we're gonna spend a week on, I don't, I don't want them to be thought of like a project that has a high impact on your grade. I want you to more think about it as an opportunity to sort of explore uh, what we've learned in this class in a way that's not going to massively impact your grade. I'd rather you sort of like take some risks and try something interesting than worry about your grade when we do those. So those will be sort of largely completion graded uh, and not a huge overall impact on your grade. So something to keep in mind there. Okay, uh, grading scale, there's not much interesting here. Um, the only deviation from what you would expect might be this A plus uh, cutoff here, which is up to uh, as high, it is 99%. Um, grades are sort of generally very good in this class. So we had to bump that up and there's no difference between an A and an A plus for your GPA, so I'm not super worried about that, but we just had to do something uh, to keep that A plus having its sort of distinction, but otherwise uh, the grading skill is pretty normal. Um, yeah, so there's this bit about grade disputes here, which doesn't apply a lot in this class because of the auto graded nature, a lot of the pre-learn stuff, but generally the policy is um, when you receive a grade on something, you have one week to dispute any of it. Um, the idea here is that we want you to keep up with what you're, well, there's two things here. One is it's to guard against everyone coming back in week 16 and arguing for a bunch of points, just because frankly, logistically, we don't want to deal with that. But the, the more important reason for doing this is to force you to keep up with your grade. Um, we don't want there to be surprises about sort of where your grade stands later on in the course. So when we give you a grade, we want you to look at it. We want you to make sure it's correct. Um, the, the biggest grading issue, honestly, that you should always check for is human error in just the entry. Now, this, this won't happen with the pre-learn quizzes because it's all computerized and automatic. But when we say go to grade the analyses and we have to like uh, tally maybe subsections of a rubric, like we're just going to input a number wrong. And maybe we or, or something like we input a one instead of a 10, bring that to our attention immediately. Like we screwed up. We need to fix it. Um, but 
sort of no fair if you you wait till the very end and find those. You need to be tracking your grade along the way. Okay. Um, okay, academic integrity. This is the section that says uh, don't cheat. Um, obviously on exams, we'll give you a lot more information about this and you'll be proctored. So hopefully you'll be thinking about that. Um, now, um, I, I said, you know, I'd rather you overshare code than undershare code. And, and what I mean is if you are encountering a problem and you want help on Piazza or in office hours, overshare your code. What I'm not saying is do your assignment uh, note all the code, save it, and then like send it off to your friends. That's not what I'm saying, and that's a different thing. And it's gonna be a little gray, but basically, if you're talking to another classmate about a problem, unless you're asking publicly, like on Piazza or in office hours, our hope would be that you're not just directly sending code to each other, and that you're talking about it in spoken language, um, because that will sort of better help you understand what's going on and it won't be so much you giving someone an answer as you help you're helping them get there and understand it themselves um so um something to keep in mind and i know that's kind of me telling you two exact different things but i think most people will sort of find the, the happy medium there um and then this is just my note about i like to sort of run courses in a way where all my material is pretty much publicly available so what I really don't like to see is when students post that on something like a Course Hero or a Chegg, um, that then it gets put behind a paywall and students have to pay to access it. Um, so you can send my material to whoever you want, that's fine, pass it around, that's great. But I really don't want you giving it to any of these services that will then charge other students to see it and or answers about it. Um, if I find anything on there, um, I, I will be rather upset. And if I can, you know, find out who put it there, um, I, I might ask you to not do that anymore because um, I, I don't want people paying for something that they get access for free. Okay. Um, the, these, this is usual uh, things that get put in a syllabus, although it's not as relevant this semester because we're online. So some of the general safety aspects of classroom uh, attendance don't apply. Um, so uh, this is the note about uh, if you have dress accommodations, please let me know, uh, send me your letter uh, as soon as you can. But more important than sending me your letter of accommodation is sending it to um, uh, Carlene with the CBTF. Uh, so if you have dress accommodations, when you take the exams, that accommodation will be um, uh, done by the CBTF. You won't need to go through dress. Uh, so you need to get um, uh, CBTF through Carlene, that information. Uh, talking to students, this seems to be a very seamless process. It's as easy if, in some cases, not even easier than scheduling with DREZ. Um, so uh, please do get them the information they need to do that, though. And then, frankly, I don't even know how it works because it seems to be so easy that students don't have a problem with it. You just do all of that through CBTF, which I have found to be a wonderful service. Okay, um, getting to the end of the syllabus here. Uh, so we're moving into syllabus plus plus territory, which is a little bit what I have here. This is something called the extended syllabus. So this is some stuff that I've written up about sort of how I feel about uh, courses, why I do some things the way I do. Um, yeah, um, so I'm not gonna go through this now, except to um, uh, go through this section here about health. So, um, spring 2021, this is another COVID semester. Um, something I'm gonna try to be more cognizant of this semester is not constantly mentioning COVID. Um, so what, what I mean by that is, you know, the university is doing a ton of messaging about COVID. Uh, everyone's talking about COVID. It's just, it's all we hear about. Now, what, what I don't wanna say is I'm gonna ignore COVID. I'm absolutely not. Like, I understand that we need to be more accommodating this semester. Um, one of the ways I'm doing that is through, you know, the use of the rolling deadlines for the quizzes and things like that. Um, but but I, I'm not going to start every uh, announcement by saying, oh, another horrible week and things like that. I, basically, I'm going to try to talk about it less and I'm going to try to be less negative about it. I mean, it's a terrible situation, but we, we all get that. Um, and, you know, we've had a couple hard semesters and I, I just don't think you need to hear about it constantly. So I'm going to try to talk about it less. But I, I mean that to say, I'm not gonna ignore it. I just don't wanna have to bring it up and constantly remind ourselves of it. 
Um, so sort of to that end, something that I say in all semesters, and this is going to be kind of my one spiel about COVID, um, is that I think everyone needs to sort of like make sure you're you're paying attention and, and keeping up with your health. Um, and I don't just mean like don't get COVID. I also just mean like, you know, take care of yourself in general because the better you're feeling, um, the more successful you will be uh, with respect to your learning. So I think there's sort of three-ish things that you can sort of focus on when you're, you're you know, trying to stay healthy, trying to get through the semester without getting too run down. Um, hopefully you're feeling rested after the break, although this break has probably not been as great as other ones, but, um, you want to try to keep that feeling going as long as possible. And I think there's three areas you can focus on there, which are diet, exercise, and sleep. Now, the other thing I want to say about this is I, I don't want anyone to feel like, well, if I'm not doing these things, I can't succeed. And then it becomes this anxiety inducing thing where it's like, oh, here's a bunch more things I need to do. But I just want to say like, you know, throughout the semester, you'll have to make choices about these things and if more often than not you make a decent choice that's probably good so with respect to diet you know maybe pizza and beer every night is not a good idea you know get a little more protein eat more vegetables get more fiber right so make choices more in that direction than in the pizza and beer direction right um exercise right so it's winter in east central illinois so getting exercise is really difficult um, and especially with the gyms being, you know, not as, um, user friendly as they normally are, but you know, if you have a free hour, you know, maybe bundle up and go for a walk instead of sitting on the couch and playing video games here and there, right. You just, you got to stay active. Um, you can't sit inside all day. Um, you need to get a little sun, um, you know, get some fresh air, um, move around a little bit, um, and then sleep. And, and this is a really difficult one. Um, but if you can, you know, make a few good sleep decisions, you know, maintaining, you know, you don't have to go to bed at, uh, 8 PM, but, you know, maintain a, you know, a structured sleep schedule, sleep in a dark room, sleep in a cold room. Um, those of you in dorms or just in general earplugs go a long way. They're a really cheap investment that can really produce, um, noise. If you're in, uh, sort of a, uh, a not so silent environment, which can really affect sleep. Um, and, and I think all of these things can be shown very easily to have effects on how well you learn. So, you know, if you're presented with a choice where you can, you know, uh, go the pizza and beer route or go the, the healthy choice route, just, you know, more often than not try to go in the right direction. Although don't, don't be crazy about that kind of thing. Okay. Um, oh, the, the other thing about sleep is, um, it's 2021 and we spend most of our time looking at screens and they're emitting a bunch of light at our eyes. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of us, we end up doing this late at night as well, which has, it literally interrupts uh, your sleep. I forget the exact mechanism. I believe it suppresses melatonin, melatonin production or something like that. But anyway, if you haven't already install flux or use, uh, you know, I think Max now have a built-in red light shift at night, but basically, um, you want to tone down the blue light at night, um, run, run a program like this for a couple weeks and then turn it off. And you'll be like, how did I ever use a computer at night without something like this? Your eyes will thank you. You'll literally just feel less strain on your eyes. You'll sleep better. Um, please, please get a red light. Um, or, uh, what do you call it? A blue light blocker, uh, at night. Okay. Um, okay. So that's enough of that. Um, one more thing on my website that I'd like you to read, and we'll come back to this when we talk about the website in a second, uh, is this um, 10 Simple Rules for Success in 432. Um, uh, it's, just, it's just some notes uh, about how to approach this class as a student uh, based on you know, my various years teaching this class and how, how students have reacted to it. Um, what, one thing that I sort of like to caution against is that uh, I think you can go look up historically the grades given out in this class have been pretty good. Um, but, but don't take that to mean it's an easy class. Um, th that, that's, that's not, uh, that doesn't necessarily follow. So just keep that in mind as well. Okay. So that's syllabus plus plus, um, video. Um, oh, so my note about video is just going to be that, um, you're watching them. They're asynchronous. Um, Something that will ha you'll you'll notice is um, there's gonna be a bit of a time travel in these videos. Uh, occasionally, 
you'll see videos of me from three or even six months ago, uh, or, or sometimes it'll be more like this. I've tried to do a good job of not like saying things about the course as they happen in the videos, save for in these sort of like obvious like semester welcome videos. Um, but if, if you encounter some like weird bit of information about the course and you can see that it's an old date on the video, just ignore it. Um, so I'll, I'll obviously be doing new videos this semester, but I'll also be reusing some videos, mostly so that I can um, free up my time to do some other things in the course, like add to the quizzes new and more interesting questions, work on the analyses and things like that, um, that I think are, are, are more beneficial to you anyway. So we'll, there'll be some recycling of videos, there'll be plenty of new videos, um, but so just just a, a fair warning about that. Um, and I guess to that end too, uh, there's old versions of videos, but the ones I expect you to watch are the ones that I post on our course website. So uh, if there's ever a doubt about what video to watch, just go to the course website and it'll tell you uh, what exactly you need to uh, watch or read for a particular week, uh, which means I think it's a good time to now talk about the uh, course website real quick. So uh, again, if you go to stat432.org, that will bring you to the course website. It looks something like this. Obviously, I'm making this video before the start of the semester. So uh, in theory, come first day of class that Monday, uh, this line will no longer be there. So basically, uh, the layout of the website is you have the landing page, you have the syllabus that you've already seen me go through. Uh, and then these 16 numbered links over here correspond to the 16 weeks of the course. So for the first week of the course, you would click this link here and this will tell you everything you need to know about week one of the course. So uh, here we have the days that correspond to this week, uh, a brief summary of what we're gonna talk about um, some specific learning objectives. Um, so a list of readings uh, to take care of. Um, I might add to this list. I, th I thought I did. So there'll probably be a couple more. Like I'm going to add like the syllabus to this. Um, did I put it in the wrong week? No. Anyway, I could have sworn I added to this, but I guess I didn't upload it yet. Anyway, um, so here's the readings. Um, I'm making the videos right now, but this was where they'll be posted uh, after I make this video. Uh, and a couple other ones for this week. This will be where the assignments, so uh, so this quiz one is over this material here, but note that it's due during the following week. So basically every quiz, you know, I'll release the content for week one on Monday of that week, and the quiz will be due that following Monday. Uh, and then, you know, the subsequent Mondays after that. Uh, and it, I'll keep a running total of like what quizzes are available for what amount of credit, uh, and then office hours. So like for this first week, um, we're not gonna have office hours on the first Monday, uh, but we will start them up on uh, Thursday. Uh, and then in future weeks, it'll be Monday and Thursday of the week. Uh, and then sometimes I'll add some additional information down here um, that won't be required reading, but it can, it's, it'll be things I find interesting, but blog posts or whatnot uh, about machine learning and related topics that you might find interesting um, as we move through the course. But yeah, so basically long story short, um, the syllabus has what I believe to be all the information you need. And then for each individual week, um, you go through here. Obviously I haven't posted uh, everything, but for example, here's what a typical week will look like. Okay, so um, you would wanna come here and click this quiz 01. We'll talk about Prairie Learn now. I sort of already have it set up a little bit so it'll look like what a student looks like. Okay, so here is what you'll see in Prairie Learn. And obviously there's gonna be more of the quizzes as time goes on, but for now there's just quiz one. Um, so I wanna mention a few things. Okay, so I'm gonna read this real quick. So it says, you have unlimited attempts at each question. So, um, there, so I just wanna be really clear here. There's no penalty for guessing. Guessing is not useful, uh, but there's no penalty for getting it wrong. So don't worry about that. Uh, please be aware of available credit ranges. Um, oh, this didn't do what I wanted it to do. So it should, it should tell you like 105% here. This will look different for you. I see, but that's okay. Um, you can, and like you should use R for all questions. Okay. So on the exams, you'll have access to R in our studio. So for everything you do, assume that you can use R in our studio. 
Uh, and then when copying and pasting final answers, please supply as many digits as possible. Okay, so let's do a couple. Okay, so basically there's two types of questions. There's checkbox questions like this, and then also uh, numeric uh, entry questions. We'll look at some of those too. Okay, which of the following technologies will be used in this course? So I'd have to go look at the syllabus, but I think I can do this. We're going to use R. We're not using Jupyter Notebooks. We're not using SAS. We're not using Python. We're not using MQ. We are using Piazza. We're using Parallel. Okay, cool. Okay, and it shows me that I got it right. Okay, so that's not particularly uh, interesting. Let's look at something like um, this. Okay, so in this question, blah, 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 we have some random variables, calculate these expectations. Okay, great. So let's say that I did that and I thought that these were the answers, right? They're not, but let's say I thought those were the answers. Okay, click this. Oh no, I got it wrong. But it shows, okay, well here were the correct answers. So you can go back and sort of figure out what you did wrong. You'll also generally get some hints. Uh, this hint is not super helpful, but it links you back to my old Staff 400 website, which will have notes and things relevant to how to do this type of problem. Um, but then you say, okay, well, here's the answer for this setup. I figured out what I did wrong. Try it again. Now notice that the question is slightly different, but you can try it again and I'm not gonna do it, but you could. Okay, so that's another type of question. And then sort of the, uh, here we go. Okay, so a lot of questions will um, expect you to use R. So this question basically says, here are some vectors X and Y, calculate the root mean squared error or the mean absolute difference. Okay, cool. So let's pull up R real quick. Let's get a new script here, something like this. Okay. Um, Right. So what did it say I need to do? I need to calculate these two things, right? Um, so let's do that. Uh, so let's do x minus y. Uh, what, is it, what is it? The, the mean of that. And then the square root. Square root of that. Cool. Uh, and then, yeah, I just want to do the first one. Okay, so whenever you're working in Prelearn, I would say work on the question, get, you know, work up your answer. I should zoom in a little bit here. Work up your answer and then highlight everything and run from top to bottom just to make sure you're catching that seed correctly. And then you do something like this and I don't wanna do this one. Okay, save and grade. Uh oh, I got it wrong. I actually knew that. I, I didn't quite do this formula right, but I wanna note that. Okay, so it tells me the answers for this setup, but now let's read a little bit. For each new variant of this question, wait, each new variant of this question will generate data using a new seed, meaning that this code is gonna change. So even though these formulas might say the same, the answers are gonna change. Uh, do not use a for loop, I didn't, uh, okay. But so basically, so note that this is 83384. So try new question, 61549. So basically I need to do that. And then what I forgot here was uh, I didn't do this, I think. Okay, but then again, so highlight everything, run it from top to bottom. This should be the answer. That goes there. I don't wanna do this one. There you go, that's how you do it. I can do a root mean squared error in R. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, so that was a little bit about Prairie Learn. Um, this first quiz, um, there's nothing too um, crazy here. A lot of this should be reviewed. This is technically the only new stuff, which there'll be a video on. Um, this is largely review of STAT 400 stuff, but needing to do it in R. Uh, this is stuff about the syllabus. Um, okay, so I didn't take any notes along the way about things that I forgot to talk about. So I think, think that's it. So, um, yeah, um, yeah, welcome to Staff 432, spring 2021. Um, so um, I end most of the videos the same way, which is to say that uh, if you made it to the end of the video, uh, good job, and I hope to see you in the next one.